This is the mop up. Are you happy? I'm happy. Trump's been indicted. The problem is he's happy too. Now, in the uh, run up to Thursday's indictment, special counsel Jack Smith presented to a Miami grand jury evidence of how Donald Trump mishandled classified documents. According to an FBI agent, some of these documents contain nuclear secrets. I'm not quite sure what that means. And uh, according to the indictment, Trump in 2021, while he was no longer president, he told someone from his political action committee, this is in the indictment, he had a representative from one of his political action committees uh, over, and uh, he told them that Biden was conducting a military operation overseas that wasn't going well. And then <laughs> Trump whipped out a map, a, a classified map, and he indicated uh, to the other moron where our troops are, and then caught himself and said, Trump said, don't get too close to the map. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Here are photographs uh, the Miami grand jury looked at before they decided to indict Donald Trump. This is, this is in the indictment. Uh, this is a photograph. This is the bathroom inside what is called the lake room at Mar-a-Lago. And right there on the left is the toilet and the documents behind the toilet. I've heard of document dumps, but this is a new one. Uh, you know, some people leave out magazines in the guest bathroom or a crossword puzzle. Donald Trump's idea of a good toilet read for guests is the nuclear capabilities of Iran. Here's another picture. The grand jury was shown this picture. These are boxes of government documents. <laughs> These are boxes of government documents Trump took with him after leaving the White House. And they are, this is not AI. This is from the indictment. They his government documents are stored on the stage at Mar-a-Lago. OK, it's not the stage. It's one of the smaller stages inside the white and gold ballroom. It's, uh, you know, for up and coming classified documents to get good or where the more seasoned professional classified documents can pop in to try out their new classified material. But the really great classified material, you know, where it's the audience's fault for not laughing, that you keep in the main room. Seriously, this is, it was on a stage in a small ballroom, not the, the ballroom, but a ballroom at Mar-a-Lago. And you have to remember, Mar-a-Lago isn't Trump's private residence. He lives there. But it's a club, it's a hotel, it's for weddings and bar mitzvahs. And any drunk with a rented tuxedo can wander around. Now, do I think there's anything in those documents that if they got into the wrong hands would make America less safe? Look, I want him to go to prison. But I, I just don't think there was anything in those documents. You know, we're, we're told they contain nuclear secrets. What does that mean? Uh, we'll find out. Classified material is mostly classified to make people who work in our government safe, not us safe. People who work in our government are saved by marking documents classified. That way they can't be prosecuted for the many crimes they commit. Everything in Washington is classified you have to make out a Freedom of Information request form to learn which defense contractors played golf with President Biden. I think maybe there's some information in those documents that uh, Trump held on to. I think there might be some information in those documents that might have made a day trader rich two years ago. But these documents are all at least, what, three years old? I think they're worthless. I think, you know, we spend trillions of dollars a year on defense. 
when we have no real enemies. But to scare the taxpayers, we have all these secrets, you know, classified documents. We have the NSA and the CIA. And you know what the NSA and the CIA, you know what they do all day? They spy on our allies. They spy on us. We just discovered our government spies on pro-choice protesters here in America. We discovered that the FBI is spying on Black Lives Matter protesters. They're spying on you. They're spying on me. Why? Because we don't have any enemies to spy on. Really, we, you know, a couple, but not really. So the government, to justify $1 trillion in defense that we know about, and then to justify the CIA and the NSA, that's a whole other budget, uh, the government has to look busy. And so they spy on us, and then they keep it all classified. The government is upset that Trump mishandled, quote unquote, classified documents. It went on for three years. And look, I want Trump in prison for the rest of his life and his family. But he held on to these classified documents. But where's the security breach? Nothing happened. I'm not trying to sound like a Fox News pundit. Uh, I just feel that most classified documents are BS. Nobody really reads or cares about classified documents. Our own government doesn't read these documents. If they did, the World Trade Center wouldn't have come down. That being said, again, I'm not discounting the crimes of Donald Trump. It's, you know, but don't let's not get our hopes up here. I'm all for locking Trump up. By any means necessary, you know, Al Capone, they got him for taxes. By any means necessary, lock Trump up. And so on Tuesday, Biden's Justice Department is trying. Donald Trump has been ordered to appear before a federal judge in Miami this Tuesday, where he will be officially charged. He's floundering, flailing. Two of his lawyers walked away from the case, uh, James Trusty and John Rowley. They left Trump's legal team. They were supposed to help him. On Tuesday, they quit. And there is some good news for Trump. He'll be going before a judge on Tuesday who he appointed. Federal Judge Eileen Cannon down in Florida. Trump nominated her. And you might remember that early on in this classified documents case, she issued a series of rulings in his favor at first. At first, the Justice Department's indictment was unsealed on Friday. The former president has been charged with 31 violations of the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act. He's been charged with 31 violations of the Espionage Act. Another charge for obstruction of justice. Three counts for withholding evidence and two counts of making false statements, bringing the total number of charges filed against Donald Trump to 37. Now, the former president is accused of breaking seven specific laws, 37 charges on breaking seven specific laws. And I'm going to try to explain what he's accused of. Basically, this is the crime of a self-destructive lunatic who has to destroy everything he touches, including himself. Now, I don't know anything, and I'm hoping this time we got him, right? We keep thinking we, we got him. I'm not trying to tamp down my hopes here. I hope, you know, I am hope he's punished for treason. But, you know, there's nothing Trump could hand over to Vladimir Putin that Putin doesn't already know. There's nothing Trump could tell Putin about what America knows about Putin that Putin doesn't already know we know about him. I feel, and I don't know anything, but I suspect this is just Trump doing what he always does, having to destroy. He has a compulsion to destroy everything around him, including Donald Trump. I have a friend, Rick Overton, great comedian, and he said to me years ago that there's a certain type of person and I never forgot this. And this is who I remembered what Rick told me. And this is who Trump is. Rick said, said to me, OK, you know that feeling when you go to sit down and you realize the chair isn't there? 
He said, you know that feeling of terror and uncertainty as your ass is just about to hit the floor? That's what these people live for. That moment right before you fall on your ass. And Rick Overton said some people don't feel alive unless they feel like they're just about to land on their ass. So I never forgot that. And as I come to watch, come to be obsessed with Donald Trump, I think he's one of those people. I think he lives for the fight as well as the terror of falling on his ass. He lives for this. He is happy tonight. Trump is accused of mishandling 31 documents. All but one had been labeled classified. Now, I'm going to try to explain this. Uh, you have to remember that one of those documents isn't classified, and that's very important if you want to understand the case that Jack Smith is presenting. The mishandling of these documents, according to the prosecutors, violates a portion of the Espionage Act, which specifically forbids any member of the government from holding on to any national defense document that they are no longer authorized to keep. Now, the Espionage Act was passed during World War I by one of America's worst presidents, Woodrow Wilson. They keep updating the Espionage Act. This is the same act that they're going to try Julian Assange if Britain is cruel enough to extradite Julian Assange. Now, the Espionage Act, one of the provisions says no document pertinent to America's defense or any document that could give a foreign power an upper hand in its dealing with the United States can be in the possession of anyone unauthorized to keep it. It is a violation of the Espionage Act to show these documents to any third party, whether they, whether they are known agents of a foreign power or not. In other words, showing a map, a classified map, that's at least a year old, to a political operative, he's obviously not going to call the leader of the country our military is fighting against. Doesn't matter. The Espion Espionage Act says you cannot show these documents to anyone who's not authorized. Now, prosecutors say Donald Trump met with two writers researching an autobiography for Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows entered into evidence, entered into the indictment, is a recording from that meeting. CNN has, has heard it. They've listened to it. It was recorded during a 2021 meeting held at Trump's Bedminster, New Jersey golf course, months after Trump was no longer president. And according to CNN, Trump can be heard on tape. And this is what they say in the indictment that he's heard on tape telling the two researchers from Mark Meadows' book that he has in his possession a military report prepared for him, possibly a report about invading Iran. Trump is heard on tape acknowledging that he never declassified the report, then adding, and this is crucial, now that he's no longer president, he said, I can't declassify it. In other words... Donald Trump will not be able to claim ignorance of the law, and he can't claim he declassified the material. He knew exactly what he was doing when he waved those documents in front of those two researchers. He knew at the time he was breaking the law. He said so on the tape, according to the indictment. Does it matter that whatever was in those documents probably shouldn't have been classified no. The same reason the speed limit should be 25 miles per hour instead of 15 in front of a fire station, but that's the law. And if you're looking for a reason to arrest a black man, you got it. The law is the law. So you're not allowed to show a classified document to unauthorized personnel. Doesn't matter if the documents are meaningless. Now, the 
tape of his conversation with these two researchers is key because it's Trump saying, I didn't, class de I didn't declassify these documents, which means, again, he is knowingly in direct violation of the Espionage Act. And according to the audio obtained by CNN and the indictment, Trump can be heard <laughs> waving what appears to be the classified document and then telling the researchers, here, take a look. As I said earlier, all but one of the documents he's accused of mishandling were marked classified. Prosecutors, and that's important, that one document that's not marked classified could be key to the prosecution because Special Counsel Jack Smith is reportedly going to insist that the Espionage Act says it doesn't matter whether or not the documents were classified or not. You can, you can mishandle an unclassified document, and that will rise to the level of a felony as well. All the documents have to do is contain vital information that is essential to our national defense, and you're in violation of the Espionage Act classified or not, which is why Donald Trump's lawyers might end up, we're talking about classified material, right? I have a feeling Trump's lawyers might inadvertently end up doing a favor for the American people when this case goes to trial, because they are going to try to prove that these documents are garbage, that most government documents mark classified are garbage because most of the work being done in our military, for our military, over at the CIA, over at the FBI, over at the NSA, it's garbage. Most military documents are kept secret either to create the illusion we need to spend $1 trillion a year on defense or to protect our various intelligence agencies from being charged with a crime for spying on our allies or on American citizens like Black Lives Matter. Look, again, I'm not making the case for Trump. I, I've hated Trump since before most of you were born. I was raised in New York City. I can't stand Trump. I hope he gets locked up for life. I hope all his supporters get locked up for life. I'm a Democrat. I voted for Biden. But his instincts, Trump's instincts about the FBI, the CIA, and the Pentagon are correct. It's filled with a lot of self-serving, overblown browbeaters who like the taste of self-righteous power. If only Trump could carry his distaste for law enforcement to local police officers, he'd actually be performing a public service. But unfortunately, Trump only opposes the law enforcement agents who want to lock him up. He doesn't care about my civil liberties, just Donald Trump's. Again, Trump should be arrested. His entire administration should be in prison. But so should every single defense contractor, Wall Street banker and hedge fund manager. They're all criminals. But instead of going to prison, the Justice Department makes them pay a fine. Corporations are people, says the Supreme Court. They're people right up until it's time to send them to prison. Then it's just a fine. So they're going to get Trump, I hope. I hope they're going to get him on the Espionage Act. Good, lock him up. Again, I don't know what I'm talking about. All I know is what I read. I, I doubt he sold or gave any secret documents to Putin, but lock him up anyway. I doubt he did any damage to our not national security, but lock him up anyway. Seriously, lock him up. But remember that George W. Bush invaded the wrong countries after 9-11 Knowingly, he knew he was invading the wrong countries. His vice president, Dick Cheney, earned millions off those invasions, uh, offering no-bid contracts to his old company, Halliburton. And uh, that was the company he left to become vice president. 
That was a company when he lied his way into Iraq. He owned millions of dollars of worth of stock in Halliburton. He made a fortune off that war. Bush and Cheney committed crimes, resulting in the deaths of at least a million people just in Iraq alone. It cost our government trillions of dollars. Nothing. Not even a special prosecutor. Not even a special counsel. Nothing. No indictments. See, Trump is just sloppy. Trump is sloppy. That's his crime. Look, I'm glad Biden is going after Trump. But special counsel Jack Smith should not insult our intelligence the way he did today and say Trump has to be prosecuted because we're a nation of laws. Again, I'm glad they're going after Trump, but don't insult my intelligence. Don't you dare tell me America is a nation of laws. Uh, I hope Trump dies in prison. I do. But let's be honest about what this is. These are show trials that are distracting. These are show trials that will allow our government to ignore the oil companies that are killing us. You all saw the smoke this week. Oil company executives should be locked up. They've committed many crimes, which I have enumerated on this show in the past. Putting Trump away for life isn't going to put the oil companies and the for-profit health insurance companies out of business. In fact, locking up Trump only serves to perpetuate the myth that this country works for everyone. It doesn't. Yes, lock Trump up. I hate him and the people who vote for him. I, hate, I lock them up too. But he's just the shiny object dangled in front of us so we don't pay attention to the climate crisis, the eviction crisis, the homeless crisis, the health care crisis, and the concentration of wealth that has suffocated our democracy and our criminal justice system. According to reporting today in the Washington Post, prosecutors do not have to show that Donald Trump intended to pass any of these documents on to a third party. The crime is mishandling documents, not storing them properly, holding on to them, a type, of, a type of willful negligence, a sloppiness that could, that could make it possible for those documents to fall into a foreign adversary's hands, whether Trump intended those documents to fall in those hands or not. It's important to remember that you can violate the Espionage Act simply for not storing the documents properly. This is not a slam dunk for Jack Smith and the Justice Department. This is going to be a hard case to gain a conviction. What the prosecutors must prove is Trump knew that these documents, he didn't, that he, that what they need to prove is that he knew the, the gravitas of the documents, okay? It, it, they don't have to prove that he was trying to pass them off to Putin. He, they just have to prove that these were important documents that were important to keeping America safe. Now, they're going to claim he knew this uh, because after he left office, the National Archives and Records Administration which is charged with protecting these documents. They kept calling Mar-a-Lago, requesting them, and he ignored their requests. And then he received subpoenas from the Justice Department to turn them over. And even when the FBI searched his Mar-a-Lago home last year, according to the indictment, he still hid the documents from them. So he knew that the government wanted these documents. What the lawyers are going to prove or try to prove, his lawyers are going to try to prove is they shouldn't have wanted them, that they're not that important. If, if you've been told to hand over important documents, 
then you now know the documents in your possession are essential to our national's defense. That's what the prosecutors are going to claim. Refusal to turn them over is a violation of the Espionage Act. Doesn't matter that Trump wasn't going to sell the documents or hand them to Putin or if they were going to sit in the basement or (laughs) next to that toilet. He knew he had to turn them over, but he didn't. Trump is also accused of conspiring to keep the documents from the FBI during their search. According to the indictment, Trump asked his attorneys to lie about the whereabouts of the documents, to pluck them clean, take out, hand over folders, but pluck out the important stuff. He's also charged with uh, asking his lawyers to destroy the documents. He's charged with removing boxes containing the documents before the FBI arrived and relocating them to a place where the FBI couldn't find them. Trump is also being charged with keeping evidence from the grand jury of hiding the documents so they couldn't be entered into the proceedings. If guilty, according to the Washington Post, Trump faces hundreds of years in prison. Now, you're going to hear on Fox News that his mishandling of the documents is no different from Joe Biden's or Mike Pence's mishandling of classified documents. Well, it's incredibly different. Biden and Pence brought boxes home containing government documents that were labeled classified. The truth is, our government does overclassify everything. Biden and Pence most likely didn't know the documents were classified. They probably didn't even know what was in those boxes because their staffers were in charge of packing up their belongings and moving them. It's different from Trump because the minute both men were informed that those documents had to be returned, they immediately complied. Trump did not. Even after the FBI searched his home, Trump continued to hide the documents. So what are you dealing with here? I don't think you're dealing with someone who wants to give Putin secrets. You're dealing with the mind of a pathological liar and criminal. This is a man who gets off flaunting the law. He gets a jolt thinking he's outsmarted people. Instead of being upset by these indictments, for Trump, this is a notification that there's a new wordle to play because it's a game. Trump likes to win, and he has always won in the courts. It makes him feel like a man. During the first impeachment, Congressman Adam Schiff warned that if Trump's not removed from office, Trump will think he can get away with anything. And uh, Schiff added, who knows what he'll try? Who knows what he'll try? Well, we found out what he would try during the second impeachment. He tried to overthrow the government of the United States. He tried to stay in office despite not being reelected. He sent an army of goons to the Capitol on January 6th to hang Mike Pence. And then he got away with that, too. The Republican Senate still refused to vote symbolically to remove him from office. The Mueller report clearly states that Trump could be prosecuted for covering up his relationship with Russian oligarchs during the 2016 presidential election. Mueller didn't recommend an indictment for one reason, because it is official Justice Department policy that you can't indict a sitting president. But in that report, in the Mueller report, he offered a pathway towards an indictment for a cover-up, leaving it up to Attorney General Bill Barr to decide whether or not to indict. Barr twisted Mueller's words into an exoneration, which the Mueller report was not. And this emboldened Trump. So why would Donald Trump hold on to secret documents? Because he can. The same reason there are 30 credible sexual assault accusations against Donald Trump. Donald Trump takes what doesn't belong to him. He's a rapist. The fact that he can't have something makes him want it. And he wants to try to get away with it. So I'm giving Trump the benefit of the doubt and say Trump wasn't going to sell these documents. I think he just wanted souvenirs. Or like I said, he's really sick in the head 
and he wanted to see what he could take, what he could take and get away with. We all know people like this. You're probably working for one. They do bad things because it makes them feel strong and powerful because they can get away with it. These people have no gifts. They have no other interests. Trump, all Trump has is the con. He doesn't read, he doesn't garden, play music or paint. He's not even smart enough to make exciting business deals because nobody trusts him. And he's no good at business deals. All he's got is the con because he's stupid and he needs to feel smart. And the way many stupid people get to feel smart is by thinking they got something over on someone. He hates it that James Comey, Adam Schiff, and Jack Smith think they're so smart. So these indictments that we're so happy about, he welcomes them as an opportunity to prove he's smarter than the entire United States Justice Department combined. Tonight, Donald Trump is not scared. He's alive and he still gets to run for president. He wakes up every morning with even more purpose. Beat DeSantis, beat Merrick Garland, beat Jack Smith. He's in his element. This is where he thrives. Have the Fulton County, Georgia attorney, the DA indict me for election tampering. I'll fight you all. That's what he's thinking tonight. Trump should go to prison for violating the Espionage Act. But these documents, I'm guessing, should never have been classified. The Justice Department, here is the real issue. The Justice Department says it's official policy not to indict a sitting president. I'm hoping this trial proves that sitting presidents and former presidents should constantly be indicted. The job of president should not be so important that he can't be indicted while he's in office. And the Justice Department's immunity from prosecution gives a sitting president too much power to seize even more power because the Justice Department doesn't prosecute sitting presidents. It was that much easier for Donald Trump to try to change the 2020 presidential election. The Justice Department was called in and asked to help steal the election, and they couldn't prosecute him because it wasn't their policy to prosecute a sitting president. It's time to move the Justice Department out of the executive branch. It's time to change this policy. There is no law on the books that says a sitting president can't be indicted. It's just the policy of the Justice Department. It's a wrong policy. The classified documents Trump took home with him are bullshit because the job of president is bullshit. He's the commander in chief, but all wars are bullshit. The military and the police, they don't keep us safe. They don't. They keep defense contractors and landlords safe. Nobody's attacking us. And if they're going to attack us, spying on American citizens and Black Lives Matter protesters isn't going to stop it. Prosecute Trump, but prosecute the bankers who crashed our economy. Prosecute the health care executives who rip off Medicare. And instead of uh, making them pay close to a billion dollars in fines, Instead, make them go to prison. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Republican Florida Senator Rick Scott. Prosecute Trump, but prosecute Rick Scott, who ripped off Medicare for a billion dollars when he ran his health care company. And all he had to do was pay a fine. And then it freed him up to go run for Senate and get elected. He rips off Medicare to the tune of $1 billion. He should go to prison, not pay a fine, and then get elected to the Senate. 
warning us that Medicare has to be privatized because it's running out of money. It's running out of money because Rick Scott stole it all. Lock Donald Trump up. Lock him up. Lock everybody up. I believe in law and order. Law and order for everyone. We're locking up the wrong people. 2.5 million Americans behind bars. Empty out the empty out. Get rid of all the nonviolent offenders and fill them with rich white Republicans. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. Ethan Hershenfeld is the author of Today Is Now, written by his alter ego. Go buy Today Is Now. It's got the Feldman guarantee. He is also a brilliant comedian. You can watch his latest stand-up special, Thug Thug Jew. And you can see him on television and in a movie. What, a red notice? How many different, in the past year, how many TV shows and movies have you done? I had a good 2022. I, I did like uh, half a dozen, maybe a, a little bit more uh, gigs. Um, 2023 has been slow so far, but I did just book something, which I, I, I'm not going to talk about in any detail, but I have a fun thing coming up, it looks like. Um, well, a there's, big, been a str- there's a strike, so it's a little hard to right. find work right now. Yeah, there's less uh, stuff happening, but I guess some of the projects that were already in the pipeline that had uh, the scripts all written, you know, they, they're not affected. Although I did hear someone talking uh, in an interview about it was someone from the Writers Guild who was talking about the fact that even if the thing is already written, it's better to have some writers on staff even while the thing is in production. Right. And that's right. not happening now. So, uh uh, you know, I like Tom Hanks. I think it's impossible not to like Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I loved him in Bosom Buddies. I'll tell you when, when, for me, he jumped the shark. And I know you're probably not supposed to say this as an actor. He's a great actor. Can't take it away, anything away And a him. great American. Well, that's where, that's, that's the problem I have with him. I once saw, I think in about 1996, a Subway ad. Maybe it was 99. It was a subway ad, not for the sandwich shop, but on the New York City subway. And it was a picture of him, and he was raising money for something to do with World War II veterans. Right. And the photo of him and the text and the look on his face, to me, it evinced a misapprehension on his part. I it Because they were World War – they were from the Luftwaffe. It seemed – no, it seemed to me – well <laughs> – no, it seemed to me that he really started to think that he had saved Private Ryan. Right. It really was starting to look like, look at me. I was part of the, the greatest generation. Right. I have mud on my boots. I have the wounds. No, you don't. You're an actor. I, I it really was. It was t- it was to me that was just too much. But he's he's great. I love. By him the way, I remember years. going to see yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. And the first 45 minutes of that. Yeah. I freaked out. I mean, it was as scary to me as the oh exorcist in, in a theater. When when you see and we just lost Tom Sizemore, who had a very troubled life. Yeah. He was so great in that yeah. first. Was, so sympathetic. He, Spielberg put some incredible details into those war scenes. So the most memorable thing from that whole scene, that storming of the beach in Normandy scene, is that a guy, one of the infantrymen, who's just landed in one of those amphibious boats that they land on under heavy fire from those cliffs, he, he, he gets hit in his helmet. And he's shocked that he's alive and he got hit in the helmet. So he takes the helmet off to look at where he got shot. And right then he gets shot in the head. Right. That was funny. It's <laughs> no, 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 not, not funny. Now, he did a similar thing to me, incredibly um, memorable and haunting, just like that moment. In Schindler's List, there's a moment where there's a 
a Jewish infantryman who ends up in a hand to hand combat in a house with a with a Wehrmacht guy. Well, wait, and Schindler's let no, isn't that in uh, Saving oh, no, Private no, no, you're Ryan? You're right. It's in, you're right. It's in Saving Private Ryan. I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm right. You're right. It's in right. the same movie. So they're in that hand to hand thing. And uh, and then the Nazi gets the upper hand and then he's got the knife right up against the guy's chest. And and I mean, it's just a shocking moment. He just starts whispering. The Nazi starts whispering to him in German, just saying, like, you know, take, you know, calm, calm. I think he says, like, ruhe, ruhe, like, be quiet, quiet, quiet. And he just slowly plunges. Yeah. The knife. It's, it's shocking. It's just incredible filmmaking. Yeah, I, it, um, it, I, it was very disturbing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it, after there were parts of it that uh, it's a masterpiece. It's, it is. It, but, uh, but I remember watching that. And I, if memory serves, Saving Private Ryan came out around the same time Fox News was being introduced. Mm -hmm. And right. over the years, I think. Yeah. I remember watching Saving Private Ryan and just the, the wholesale slaughter of men how cheap mm -hmm. life was back then right and right. with fox news uh i thought there's no way fdr and eisenhower could have pulled this off today without like, like you're just gonna pour men onto the beach and right. th they're just gonna get gunned down there has to be a better way there it seems to me there had to be a better way than D Day. I mean, we we. I don't mean to. Well, they tried A, B, and C Day. And I <laughs> um, it it just seems like it. Yeah, they could have invented a better way to. I think it was do or die. I think it was back up against the wall, and uh, um, I'm no student of history, but uh, I think they. Yeah, they got, yeah, it was close. It was uh, yeah. unclear which way that thing was going to go. Are we um, capable of making decisions like that now? Well, with war we are, but uh, that kind of sacrifice? I, I don't know. Again, I'm so cynical about this. Uh, and just for me, the big, the, the, any, you know, any ethical considerations that re require a little bit of sacrifice to do an immense amount of good. And the, the vast majority of people are unwilling to, to make those very simple choices. Um, I heard that guy, uh, that philosopher who wrote animal liberation. I heard him interviewed on democ was it singer? Yeah. Singer. Um, and he, you know, I guess he wrote the thing 40 years ago. He was a young guy and he made the point. He just, from a rigorous philosophical um perspective he showed why there's no there's no defense there's no way you can mount a defense for for eating animals um, right basically for 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 factory farming for for industrial farming of animals and it's 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 proven no one can disprove it and yet people just uh and, and in fact i guess it was brian lair who was asking him. it was interesting he said what are the most common questions you get because he was speaking the other night at, at cooper cooper union peter singer was on the release of a new version of the book, a new edition. And one of the questions he always gets is, yes, yes, I agree. I understand your ethics, but I just really love it. It's delicious. Right. right. And he says he gets that question all the time. And uh, he, he still gets it. And in fact, a guy called up to make a similar point with some sort of religious overtones. Um, and his answer, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know if I have it exactly right. His answer was that, um, it, th that's when it becomes an ethical choice. You know what's right, and then you continue to make the choice that you know is wrong. And the point is that your life becomes richer, and I think the world becomes a better place if you make that you make that choice. Right. You know something's wrong. You know you're doing something right. wrong. I've had a conversation with so many people. First, they open with the joke where they say, "Oh, I like my steak really bloody." That's their sort of over the top response. Right. The whole issue acting like they're more violent than they really are and then they admit yeah it doesn't make me feel great but i really like it that's the moment you just say okay this is a great opportunity to make a choice that's ethical and difficult um i've been at parties yeah. and i've said to people 
when they, they go, well, how come you don't eat meat? I go, I find it morally reprehensible. And anybody who eats meat, it's a shortcoming. You should at least admit that you, it's, you're wrong. Right. And this guy said, uh, oh, come on. We're meat eaters from the time we were cavemen. Right. And I said, oh, from the time we were cavemen. Do you mind? I find your girlfriend very attractive. Do you mind? It's up to you, but do you mind if I club her over the head and drag her back to where all the coats are? Do, is that okay with you? Can I do that? And he let me. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that much fun? The coat was on top of the coats and stuff. A lot of times the Who's rhetoric. Laughing? Is, is, who, who, who is that? Is that? Yeah, I like it. The laugh track. Wow, I got a laugh from somebody. That's always great. Um, um, yeah, so uh, all the, 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 the kind of basic ethical considerations, that, you know, they're on my mind when you, you're hearing about this, this debt ceiling, hostage taking, quote unquote, compromise, and the fact that- That we're eating, we're well, putting we're, death into our bodies, which we shouldn't be doing. Yes, we're doing that. But as far as this, uh, the, now, like this but, but if 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 it is, if the 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 only argument, and I would be curious to know what Singer said about this. There are people who hunt and eat yeah. what they yeah. kill. I, I, I've I've thought that same thing, and I've said that if you're a person who's able to hunt the animal, kill it, skin it, butcher it, use it. Use, use it all with an awareness and you eat it and make sure it all, that seems to me like that. Um, I mean, if you're in a, if, if you have, if you, if you're lacking the resources to go yeah. to a supermarket, if you don't have the money and right. you, you know, you live off the land, it's yeah, hard to pass judgment on those worthless there's a, individuals. Well, there's a, there's <laughs> There's another book I was just I was just reading called We Are All Whalers. It's called We Are All Whalers, and it's by a guy from Woods Hole who's a uh, oceanographer. Right. Studies whales. He's been studying them for decades, and he spent time with a native population in Alaska, who has lived symbiotically with the whales for millennia, and they do hunt and eat the whales, but they use every last bit of it. And his point there is that there is an ethic there and there's a right. tradition there's a culture and that he as a as a veterinarian or as an oceanographer he can actually learn a ton from them their knowledge of the anatomy of this creature is vast and deep and they respect this creature they're not right. killing it willy-nilly they need it to live off of right. it and they 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 acknowledge and they kind of pray to it and they they the first they, peoples yeah. 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 So they're they're indebted and they feel right. indebted to this creature. So there is a way, I guess, to it's not just it's not it's really the cruelty. It's the wanton cruelty and the unnecessary suffering and all of that. So let me ask you, speaking of whales, yeah. I was talking about Chris Christie and whether or not I get to dust off my yeah. 2016 Chris Christie jokes. And somebody in the chat room is very upset. And they wrote, yeah, I saw, F, I saw. F you, it's biology. Right. You know, people are uh, his weight because of that. Well, that's the point I'm making, that biology dictates in many ways your sexuality, your your needs and how you love and who you love. And his party uh, doesn't uh, protect, uh, abuses people who were Right. Because no, I, I, take, I take your point, but I don't know. Again, I, li I, th I like what Professor Hussein had to say, which was that what points are you really scoring or what's the what's the upshot of that when it when the collateral damage is, you know, uh, hurting uh, people who, yeah, who struggle with this. Uh, but are you hurt? I'm, I'm being this is a serious question. Yeah. Are you hurt? hurting people who struggle with it or are you hurting him specifically for, let me ask you if i attack yeah. you for being jewish 
if I say, uh, yeah. you're, 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 you know, f for a Jew to talk that way, mm -hmm. you know, you, uh, the hypocrisy, there are things that Jews can be called on for hypocrisy. Uh, Roger Waters uh, is paying a price for that in Germany right now, saying right. Uh, people who were victimized by Nazis should not be shooting Palestinian journalists. Right. Uh, Is that the same? I'm not asking you about the morality of Roger Waters. I'm asking yeah. you, is, isn't is that the same as calling Chris Christie out for his weight problem? Is that offensive to all? Is Roger Waters offending all Jews or is he offending specific Jews right. who should know right. better because right. of that? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I see your point. And yeah, you're maybe you're lampooning a Republican. Harpooning. Har 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 harpooning. <laughs> so I've gotten into like there have been some angry arguments that I've gotten into with right. people that if. Like I have hair plugs. Mm hmm. Like I need to tell anybody, but I'll make fun of somebody's toupee or their hair plugs. Right. Uh, I'm self-conscious about my hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were, I made fun of uh, the, the guy from Alabama who attacked, who lunged at Matt Gates with his toupee. Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Um. Man, I'm I'm not a good debater. I, I I'm just I, like, curious. Like, what is the no, ethics? What, I don't going? know. I don't know. I'm my ability to parse these finer uh, points in a. I, I'm this is really not where I excel. I don't know the answer to any of this. I just I am sensitive to the idea of like the whole teasing thing. Of course, a good, really good joke is a really good joke, and that's never off limits. But <laughs> somebody wrote. I Tom, we have an obligation not to be cruel. We also have an obligation to eat the dead and then poop it out. It's a real endless <laughs> uphill climb to nowhere. This is why I don't read, <laughs> read the chat. Um, um, or like, Lindsey so Graham, I, like Lindsey Graham, his sexuality. Yeah. Right. Is that... It, 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 I've been told... You have no right to out somebody. Right. If they're in. No, I see your point. It makes fun because in that case, it's very clear. It's even clearer than in the Christie case that there's a hypocrisy there. So you can't you kind of have to point it out because he's he's in a party and he's personally endorsing policies that are cruel and that cause harm and suffering and even death to well, to gay people. And then and, and Chris Christie is endorsing policies that are. Cruel, because it crueler has the word cruel in it. And so he's. Oh, <laughs> crulers. What are crulers? Yeah, that's a cruller. That's like a, a new book donut stand joke. That's very right. niche. Um, a cruller. Cruller is what that. you eat when there are no more donuts left at the donut. Well, I used to like that item in a donut cart. I'll tell you why. Because one of my favorite things, and I don't you eat think them anymore. You think you're getting more. Well. There's no hole. No. To me, it was a question of the structural the structural integrity of the treat. Let me explain. My favorite thing was at a donut cart to get a coffee and a donut and then dip. You dip the donut and then you eat it. Now, the donut doesn't quite fit. The, the, the diameter of a donut right. is greater than the diameter of a coffee cup. Right. So. That's that means the first bite, you can't do a dip. But with a cruller right from the start, wham, it's right in there. So I used to really like that. Right. The marble cruller. Yeah. yeah. But I don't because there there's egg in there. I don't eat them anymore. You don't eat. But now eggs are can be ethical if they come from a chicken that is farm raised. Again, if you yeah, if I were picking it, I, you can I tell I have a lot of farming experience. If I was picking the eggs off of the off of the the egg vine myself, then yeah. yeah. 
Now the cloaca. Uh, I, feel less. I, I I blew the whistle on the cloaca this week about chickens, and this is never discussed. What that the cloaca is not the butt? Is that what this is? Well, that that chickens are the progeny of sodomy. Jesus, this is. And, and I, this is this this is something that I talked about. I think it was Monday's show or Tuesday's, and people were very upset. Wow. That, I'm going to look that up. I'm not going to comment on it until I look, look it up. I, I think the cloaca, that we cannot, as good Americans, good homophobic Americans, have anything to do with any animal that shares its reproductive parts with its digestive system. Amen. Amen to why, that. Why, why aren't we banning chicken from... I mean, it's, it's repulsive. Eggs are... Eggs are... What do you... What did you eat tonight? <laughs> what did you eat tonight? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, give a little shout out to Jungle Cafe on, on Green, Greenpoint Avenue in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Jungle Cafe. It's a vegan place. It has a vegan buffet. It's great. Jungle Cafe. I've been eating there for years. So that's what I had. Before that, I drove from Cape Cod. Let me ask you a question. If I get on a ferry at Gracie Mansion. You come right over to Greenpoint. Yeah. So I could just meet you for lunch? Yeah. In fact, I'm coming to your neighborhood on a ferry tomorrow for this bar mitzvah on 55th Street. I've never taken the ferry from Gracie uh, Mansion to Greenpoint. Okay, um, I haven't taken it from that Upper East, but I take it from. Uh, so, from are you telling me I, across to thirty third to thirty third right. Street? Yeah. So, if you say to me, "Hey, you want to meet at uh, yeah. Jungle? Yeah. What's it called? Jungle Cafe." I can get on the ferry, go across yeah. the East River, and I yeah. where and how at Greenpoint, and then it's like a it'll be like a seven ten minute walk. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, tr- Transmitter Park. If you look on the map, Transmitter Park, that's where the uh, the pier is, and that's Greenpoint Avenue. You just walk a few blocks up. I see. Yeah. So did, you're going to a bar mitzvah tomorrow. Did you go to the bar mitzvah yeah. tonight? I went to the, so I went to the, um, so the traditional meal the night before the bar mitzvah, it's, it's my friend who has twins. So it was a, it's a bot and bar mitzvah together. Um, and so the traditional meal at Shun Li Palace mm-hmm. at the Chinese place. <laughs> Uh, a block from so that was a little like friends gathering then there was some praying i only stayed for about 10 minutes of that praying because you know i've done it before i know how it goes i feel like i i went to the it's like the express checkout lane right and hold it's like i just i was so i came home um and uh and then tomorrow, tomorrow go back. you got to go 11 yeah 11 ish in the morning yeah i blew off a funeral today uh-huh i feel guilty don't, the thing is, um, because I killed the person who was being buried. I, I, I <laughs> funerals to me, they're gone. But you know, when you kill somebody, you feel. I, I, I didn't. I should have gone. Do you, you go to funerals? Huh? You can always. The thing about uh, honoring someone who's died is that they're still dead tomorrow. They're going to be dead forever, so you can honor them whenever you want. Right. That's the great thing about a shiva. Yeah, you have seven. Yeah, yeah, you have seven chances. The thing, the night you ever been to one of those shivers where they have that punch card? Seventh, the seventh day is free. Punch. <laughs> is that what shiva means? Seven. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're sitting shiva. Shiva. Yeah. Shiva. Uh, yeah. Sh- seven days. Right. Now you is did something. Day? You did something yesterday when we were doing the show with you and your dad. You said the Jews in the Old Testament, they're obsessed with the number seven because back then they didn't know how to carry the two. That's right. And I believed you. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend of mine about you, and I said, Ethan is probably the greatest bullshit artist I've ever met in my life. That's a great compliment. You are. You, You have... Th- that you can convince you could convince well, that, anyone go ahead 
That's the acting thing. That's what it is. It's make believe and it's convincing yourself and then convincing other people, just selling the bullshit. Well, the di I see the dynamic with your father. I think what happened when you were growing up that you were surrounded by psychiatrists uh, and also also my siblings were very, uh, let's say, Oh pedantic a big, a big water bug just walked across my kitchen floor it really felt you know my dogs aren't here they're 300 miles away but this is so big i thought it was a chihuahua wow okay <laughs> um, go ahead so they were also pushy and you had to i think you had to shove your way in if you wanted to, to participate in the conversation so part of shoving yourself in is doing it with authority even if you, you don't know what the hell you're talking about right and you have you, gotta, you have a sibling who's a doctor Yes, she she was particularly, let's say, imperial, a, a, a conversational imperialist. <laughs> like she, would just squat. She, would, she would just like squat on a territory if there was something happening. I mm -hmm. remember I would be in the middle of posing a question to try to get in on it. And she would just uh, trumpet her her point or whatever. And then, the you know, the cameras and the lights would all turn to her. There was she was. She's very compelling. There, so she's there, there's a great delight that I see in your father's eyes when you're bullshitting. <laughs> he's going. Well, he, he bullshits also. Like he's he's it's a family trait. Um, and uh, well, no, just, no, but that, that, no. You what you do is you. In fact, I thought of a segment on this show with just you. A game is Ethan telling the truth. <laughs> like where people ask you questions right. about anything. Yeah. Right. And I like that. I like that. And yeah. Is Ethan telling the truth right. or yeah. is he making this up? Right. No, I like that a lot because that is a fun thing. I do like doing that. Because I, I literally believed you when you said when, when the, yeah. the Bible. The Israel, Israelites. Yeah, they were on the they were on the half of a metric system. The metric system is based on tens. The half metric system is based on five, so it never gets up to the seven. So the seven is a very confounding number for them. They never learned how to actually deal with seven or other prime numbers. And so, you know, in long division and in addition to multiplication, you have to carry the two, you have to carry the three. Sometimes carrying the two is really beyond what they knew how to do because they were writing in sand. And when you write in sand and it's in a windy environment, yeah. you're in, you know. Yeah. And I went, oh, I didn't know that. And you were like, you would make the, you should would be great is to have a professor like for you i don't know as a stand-up i don't know to just teach things that are wrong yeah but oh, it just God. Sat... i had an idea for that i wanted to do that at um i wanted to go to the metropolitan museum <laughs> as a docent. And, lead, and lead tours which <laughs> makes absolute, absolute crap just stand in front of paintings and just and answer just, questions yes and wear you know wear a little tie oh little, my god you know. that would be so great in you, fact i would like to do that we should just do that and have someone film it and then get little crowds going uh people going by and their puzzled looks well i think the way we would need to do it is first of all you're allowed to film inside the metropolitan museum of art i don't know a oh, good good point yeah probably i think not. what would yeah. be helpful is if we got like seven people to gather around you, like right, we're so, right, yeah, and then yeah. you just start giving all the wrong yeah. uh, information. That would be fun. Yeah, and then we could that like really fun. make it, like go to the Holocaust Museum and film. No, that wouldn't be funny. Okay, I don't think they have docents there. Exactly. Actually, a friend of mine. What did he say? He said, uh, um. Yeah, I saw this actor friend of mine in Connecticut today on my way, and he said he's going to, his wife's from Belgium, they're going to Berlin together, and then they're going to, he said, then we're going to Auschwitz. And uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm one of the only people you'll ever meet who's, who, who went there twice, um, which I did. I was I was there once with some friends, and then later on someone else wanted to go I was with, so we went. You went back uh, for it, seconds. He said, we're going on a, th on a, th a three-hour tour. I booked a three-hour tour, and then uh, we both <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Gilligan's Island. Right. And then we were talking about the fact that it's yeah, it's nothing like that except same theme song. Right. Uh, Why did you go back? I mean, what was it? 
I just love the food. Um, <laughs> they have to, they, I, they have a gift shop, um, right? Unfortunately, they have all that stuff. There was kids on a high school tour. It was terrible. But no, I went back because I was then in Poland singing in, a, in an opera competition there. And my girlfriend at the time visited me and she wanted to see it. She'd never been. So we drove and went. I had seen it 10 years earlier, but I, I went back to see it. You know, the um, great story about Billy Wilder, Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. They were they were promoting a movie. Where, where is Auschwitz? Poland? Yeah. Yeah. They were promoting a movie near, near Krakow in Poland. And they decided they were all going to go to Auschwitz. The wives were with them. And Walter Matthau and his wife got into a horrible, horrible fight the night before. And so they're taking the train to Auschwitz. It's Jack Lemmon, his wife, Billy Wilder, the great director, his wife, Walter Matthau, his wife. And everybody could tell that Walter Matthau was not talking to his wife on the train to Auschwitz. They take the tour and uh, they get back on the train. And the wife says, uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, there, there was no right, no wrong. I apologize for whatever it is. Let's make up. And Walter Matthau said, it's too late. You ruined Auschwitz for me. And apparently Jack Lemmon and Billy Wilder just like fell off their chairs yeah. laughing hysterically. Yeah. Um Walter Matthau is a great actor and, and is a went from character actor to a leading man and a hmm. and a, a women found him really something they, found, they there was sex appeal with Walter Matthau. Yeah. Um, what would you like to talk about before? Oh. Um are you relaxed? You're in Cape Cod right now. No, I'm in New York. I drove to New York today for this. Uh, oh, OK. Bar mitzvah but yeah, the lighting, it looks like you've been out. And yeah. No, I just uh, I don't know. Um, it's just me and a roach. Um, so. Um, so you're bothered oh, by the roach. Do you want to no, go I'm kill really the not. roach? No, no, no I, I won't. I'll just throw them outside. Um, what I. Oh, wait a second. To... You don't kill roaches? No. What are you a Buddhist? No, I don't. I don't do any killing. I never like killing bugs. From from a. In fact, there's an anecdote on page one of Today Is Now about kids who like to kill bugs, and that was sort of a, an awakening memory for for Doctor Benjamin. Um, but what if, in, what if your apartment has an infestation? Well, um, what about right. mice? I did, no, I did talk to a Buddhist guy who the guy who founded that. An, an organization that I, we've talked about that trains those those Gambian pouch rats to sniff out tuberculosis and sniff out landmines. An amazing organization. And I asked him this very question because I was troubled by the fact that there were some mice in the building a few years ago. But as a vegan, and I just didn't want to do any killing. And he said, yes, yes, but sometimes you have to for your own health, for the health of the building, they carry disease, et cetera. That's what the Buddha but, said. Yeah. He's a Buddhist monk, but he said, yeah, but sometimes you have to. I have a great money making Buddhist exterminators for New York City. That that we 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 take care of. We we send mice and cockroaches on a is it called a bardo? Oh, no, uh, the bardo to the, the bardo. bardo. Yeah. What is the bardo? Yeah, so the bardo is a sort of in between state in buddhism it's uh when you have um expired and uh your soul is um it's it's i think it's not kind of decided yet what's going to happen is it going to so go may, back maybe it's going to be reincarnated or is it going to be liberated bardo yeah. associates if you have a problem with mice water bugs cockroaches but you're a buddhist will come into your home and assist these lovely creatures into their next life. Incarnation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it sounds, um, 
I guess it could fly. It would fly in Brooklyn. You can make it work. I, I've told you my Bardo joke. I can't resist telling no. it again. The Bardo. No. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I had a, a Buddhist friend who said he was coming to New York to give a lecture on the Bardo. Could he stay with me? I said, yeah, you can definitely stay with me. Uh, I'm just curious. What's the Bardo? He said the Bardo is the in Buddhism, the Bardo is the state you dwell in when your life is over, but before you're completely dead. I said, oh, you mean Florida? <laughs> now, Bridget Bardot. Yes. Is an animal rights activist, isn't she? Yes. Coin that's a coincidence. Total coincidence. She's not a Buddhist. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't now, know. I'm I know you. I'm just interested in, in that whole. I, I know you and your eyes are you're you're reading the chat. I just saw the word Bardo when you said Bardo. I'm going to close the chat. How do I do? Well, that? Let's read the chat. Here we go. Well, I think if you click on the word chat, it's supposed to all just disappear. How do I make it disappear? Close. There's OK, no, that didn't work. Does oh, anybody have any questions feet. for Ethan? About yes, I'm available, by the way. I, I wanted to just say this. It's an interesting thing, um, there's a concept you've probably heard in business and in life, uh, fake it till you make it. Right. So what I've learned for, it's been a year now of, of doing this character of Dr. Benjamin, this fake, or as we've said, he's, he's not a Freudian, he's a Freudian psychoanalyst. Right. So I've been doing this character now for a year. And what I've learned is that weirdly, I now am able to um, just purely by faking it. For a year now i'm able to give very valuable free advice to people on the most confounding personal uh questions that they face well i so have a i have a problem okay i i have the answer i can't sleep i so, i i can't quit coffee what i quit coffee mm -hmm. and it solved all my problems mm -hmm. and now i'm drinking coffee at around four o'clock mm -hmm. And it just keeps me up till like four in the morning. Right. So what I would say, and this is a, a, a general um, principle, don't fight it. So if you have a thought that you don't like, don't fight it. You have to just, you can befriend it. So your insomnia is something you can just you can accept so now you can think of it instead of insomnia you can think of all these sleeping schlubs who are wasting all their time you have now you have a whole nother eight hours to do stuff that other people don't have but then the rest of the day i'm sluggish that's when you should sleep but then i'm i've, I've lived that way before mm -hmm. and i yeah. you miss the world right the world's not so great i see the other thing is, the main question to ask yourself when trying to decide if being sleep deprived is very a very serious problem for you, is you have to ask yourself, am I a long haul trucker? And if you are not, then the problem of being extremely tired and nodding off is, is not that big a deal. Or if you're a pilot it's, or a surgeon. So if you're none of those three things, if you're not a pilot, a long haul trucker or a surgeon, it's OK if you're really tired. What um, is the least amount of sleep we need? Um, so eight hours is what's recommended. They say seven beneath below seven. You're going to start suffering some consequences. There was a cardiologist who was interviewed in The New York Times the other day about his habits, what he does personally to take care of his own heart. And he makes sure to always get seven. Um, less than that, he feels is doing doing. Is that because he can't damage. carry the two? Again, uh, and he is a member of that. Uh, so, but but seriously, are you suffering from from that? Yeah, it, it's to me, it's a lack of faith. I'm drinking coffee at four o'clock for that second wind. I see. I see. It, it's, can, it's, you, can you have a decaf at that hour? Does it still give you a little? A there's little? something self destructive. Like I had quit. I caffeine and I had more energy and I was sleeping yeah. and I said, this works. Yeah. And if only I had, you know, I had my two cups in the morning yeah. of caffeinated coffee, but then I stopped and I felt great. And then I lost faith. Right. And I, I need coffee. I need, I, I gotta stay sharp. I gotta stay sharp. Right. Like being sharp. Now you mm -hmm. 
I don't mean to embarrass you, but you're a supreme intellectual. Your mind works. Wow. No, it does. Uh, I've always felt I needed a little extra something, like coffee. Yeah, me too. No, me too. I drink a lot of coffee. Oh, you do? Yes. Yeah. But I don't have trouble sleeping. Um, so, but I, I, it could be that I'm just not at that age yet. I'm getting close. To that Are there age other yet. things we could do to stimulate our mind to make it sharp? Besides, yes, there's this pranayama breathing. You can do all sorts of little breathing moves. And what is, one of the ones someone showed me that's very good for waking yourself up is, is this panting through your nose. So you like you start panting like a dog. Um, if you try to try panting like a dog. And then you close your lips and keep going. Yeah, I tried that once and I wasn't allowed on the couch. Is that, does that, do that it really kind of um, get it gets. <laughs> do you mind if I uh, sniff your butt? I don't know why I suddenly want to sniff your butt. By the way, this reminds me, I might have told you this, but a guy I love this. I did a, a show for this vegan organization down in D.C. two months ago. And the guy who who brought me down with him. He did a great joke. He did. He said he's a lawyer and he has trouble uh, not bringing his work home with him. Um, like he was walking the dog and someone came up to him and said to his dog, oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? And he, he said to his dog, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Before that you go, great. by the way, yeah. yesterday's segment with you and your dad mm. was one of the best. All right. Did we're you gonna, know while we were you? doing it, it was one of the best? I did not. I, I but did. it was nice with outdoors for me. So I see. Nice. What are you reading? Yeah. Um, well, I was reading We Are All Whalers, but yeah. I've been very distracted. My reading has been all over the place. Um, what should I read? Do you have something to recommend? Um, the New King biography. Oh. Um, okay. Have you ever read Simon Winchester? Yes, I love him. I read The Professor and the Madman, and I read... Uh, the thing about uh, Stalin. He's an amazing like, writer. Incredible, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, and, and King Leopold's Ghost. No, no, that's Adam Hosh. Oh, that's Hochschild. Right, Hochschild, right, right. yeah. Um, and Winch. Yeah, yeah, that's... All right, go. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. And I will, I'm going to take weekend. the ferry. Okay. This, next week, I'm going to get on the ferry. And okay, go, let's go. do it. Is it Jungle Land? Uh, Jungle Cafe. Jungle Cafe. Ethan Hershenfeld, go watch Thug Thug Jew on YouTube. Thank and you. Buy Today Is Now. Today Is Now the book. And the movie is coming very soon. We're getting good. very close. Very okay, good. thanks. Thank you, Ethan Hershenfeld. Bye. Bye.